Brian, welcome back to another episode in our James Hardy Color Plus video series. Thank you. Appreciate you being here, man. One of the things that seems to set the whole thing apart for me is just this concept that you're creating the product in a factory, climate-controlled environment that you you set the stage for ultimate performance and quality. So I was hoping you could sort of help our audience understand what that really means. Absolutely, yeah. So the, the really cool thing about being in the Northwest is uh, we actually have a manufacturing facility here in Tacoma, mm -hmm. and we actually do pre-finishing. So we do our Color Plus line. We actually paint some of it here. Okay. We also paint in Reno. So we've got two different facilities that help service the product. But I think the best way to think about it is, um, you know, the advantage of a controlled environment is, is it doesn't rain inside the factory. We can control the humidity. We can control the wind. We have a ton of ability to control. And what that really provides us is the best consistent application. So we're not dealing with the weather environments, whether it's too humid that day, whether it's too windy that day. We can really control and make sure that we get consistent application across the product, which means the best ability for it to perform on the wall long term. That makes sense. I'm assuming it really adds to optimized adhesion when it comes to the primer and or the paint and... Yes, it does. So we uh, produce the primer, we make the primer to bond specifically to the board. And, and the most interesting thing I think about it is, is we actually heat the board up. So we heat the board, there's a the substrate, and we heat the paint. And so the advantage of sort of doing that is we can bond the two together and we can get a 400% better paint adhesion. So you think about like applying a primer to whether it's cladding or to whether it's you know a drywall product, right? And then applying a paint to it, that bond between that primer and that paint product, we can actually get a 400% better paint adhesion with sort of heating those products to optimal connectivity. So that makes so much sense because we've uh, we've dealt with some different do-it-yourself. Uh, deck coating products, so mm. and they have a temperature range. Well, in talking yes. to the reps and working on things over the years, the air temperature is different than the surface temperature, and you have to be aware of that surface, yes. or you can have some significant challenges. So, Absolutely. Yeah, Absolutely. that's really great to hear. Uh, in reading up on the product, uh, preparing for this episode, it seems like there's a distinct difference or advantage in UV performance or UV fade with this factory produced product versus a primed product and, and field applied paint. Is that true? There is. We would say that it's about a five times better fade resistancy against UVs. Now everything's going to fade, right? So anything that's exposed to sun will eventually at some point have a degradation. What we've seen though is it's five times better than if it's standard field applied paint. And what that really means, and again, not to get too far in the weeds, but that means your eye can tell the difference about a five delta E. So if I put two different blues in front of you and they had a slight delta E variation, if it was within five, you probably wouldn't notice. The average person wouldn't notice it. And that's really what we're trying to achieve. We're trying to achieve that as it fades, it doesn't become as noticeable. Now, clearly everything will fade, so it's not fade resistant. It just fades five times slower than what would be sort of the normal, typical applied gallon of paint on a wall. Okay, that yeah. makes sense. One question I had I was wondering about, is there any data or information I would term with respect to like mill thickness? You know, you're in a factory, mm. you can really control it. How much paint you can get on that board where you and me have a construction company, <laughs> we're out there, eh, wind's going about eight degrees, <laughs> I'm kind of daydreaming and I'm spraying. Yeah. You know, how much paint actually gets on the board on the job versus in the factory? Or, or maybe you would explain it a little differently. Yeah, so I would say, I guess ultimately, um, if you think about a paint manufacturer, a lot of times they would require a certain mill coverage, right? That's how they're ensuring that the paint has enough ability to bond to the substrate, whether it's wood, whether it's fiber cement, whatever the product would be. We spend a lot of time really making sure that we're getting consistent coverage. And I think that is the hardest part to replicate in the field on a wall. So obviously you're dealing with the, the environment, the wind, the rain, the temperature, all of those things. But I think the more critical piece is the human element. 
So you think about the normal application, and it would be somebody, you know, with a spray rig, right, spraying the wall if it's a if it's a primed finish. So they've got paint in their paint mixer, they've got a spray gun, and the the biggest challenge becomes if you if you look at the face of the product, it is not a flat product. Most of our wood texture has what we call cathedraling. It has highs and lows that that sort of undulate. And so when you take that spray nozzle and you apply it towards the face, if you have highs and lows, what can happen is you get more on the highs and less on the lows. So over time, what will happen is, is with that spray on application, you'll see fading in the areas that have less paint. So our real goal is to try to get consistency across the board. We're not as sensitive to the thickness like a paint manufacturer would be. We're trying okay. to make sure that we're covering the same amount on the highs of the of the board and the lows of the board. That okay. way it'll fit it'll it'll wear the same on the wall over time and you won't have areas that are thinner and areas that still look like they have heavier coloration. Okay. Yeah. Okay, that makes sense. It seems to be in thinking about this, it feels like there must be maybe a little bit of magic dust in the paint product that you guys have created <laughs> and utilized in your factory setting. Yeah, I, I think that is a, um, it's a piece that we don't talk about as much, but I think it's a pretty interesting piece as, as, as I think about the importance of it in relationship to the product. So we had to partner with a paint manufacturer out there so that, again, we're not an expert in paint, we're an expert in fiber cement. So we found a partner uh, and we developed over the course of years basically the paint that we physically use for our product. I think the most interesting thing is, and I don't want to be too technical here, but if you think about a typical gallon of paint, that is titanium dioxide, right? You go to the store, it's a white gallon of paint, and they drop certain drops in to basically tint the color of the paint, okay? So what you're getting is titanium dioxide. Now, when we mix our paint, we actually work with the organic colors. So we have basically six to seven colors that we have, and we mix the ratio of that organic color together. Mm. And I think what's interesting is like if you went to a, you know, and went out to seek the best ideal paint for fiber cement, there is not a product on the market that says ideal for fiber cement. What you're buying is you're buying a paint that also works on wood and also works on all these other products. And so this is the only paint in the world that I know of that's actually formulated and made for fiber cement that's made from organic pigments. And that's what really allows us to have better fade resistancy, better true and richer color, it really is the paint. I couldn't imagine if we were to sell just a gallon of paint what that would cost because it's not anything that you could buy in a normal store. It's really engineered and designed to really bond and adhere to our product. And at the end of the day, uh, it, it is not something that you can just buy off the shelf somewhere else. Yeah. That's a true, what we term an apples to oranges story. Yes. So I know reading through the warranties and uh, prepping for this series, third party coatings, yeah. sorry, all bets are off, you know, if it's That's right. not. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Another one of the benefits I never really thought about, but I wanted to ask you about is just what do you see as the advantages of James Hardy putting in the work to come up with these different color collections and sort of create a our good friends at our market agency would consider a customer journey, right? Kind of cleaning up the customer journey a little bit in my mind. Yeah, I think, you know, consumers, um, they've got a lot of stuff coming at them, right? Whether it's, you know, stuff that we're seeing on, on you know, social media, it's images that we see, we drive down the neighborhood, we see things. There's a lot of inputs that are coming after us. And so what we've tried to do is try to create sort of tried and true options where we can say, here's a product that we know was going to look good on the wall, that's gonna be consistent, that's gonna provide you a, an attractive aesthetic so that you're not trying to you know, just pick a random color and hope that that looks great in the sun and looks great in the rain and looks great in the, in the dusk. We're trying to create kind of a opportunities to make it easy to choose a solution that we know is gonna look attractive and those colors can vary from market to market so we do think about what are the tendencies of this market in terms of the the climate the weather and also the choices that we're seeing people make in colors here versus a color in the midwest or a color in the northeast gotcha yeah gotcha love that i think one thing that's coming on the radar more and more for folks is fire danger and i think whether you're choosing 
a curated color from uh, in mm -hmm. the Color Plus collection, or just buying a good prime James Hardy product and doing your own painting, there's a combustible fire story to kind of talk about with James Hardy, I believe. Yeah, I, I think there's there's a couple of pieces. Our foundation is always built on the idea of how do we look like wood but provide better durability. Mm -hmm. That's always been sort of a benchmark, right? Yeah. So we're a wood substitution that that performs better than wood. And so that's everything from, you know, the fire issues that we're seeing across the region more and more every year. And we are a non-combustible product. So um, we've seen images, we've got testimonials from individuals that, hey, my neighbor's house unfortunately caught on fire, but I had James Hardy on my home, and it minimized the ability for the flames to spread from one house to another. We know that there's insurance companies out there that if you have fiber cement versus other claddings, mm -hmm. actually have a lower cost to your ownership okay. because they know that there is a durability factor in that non-combustibility. Okay. But but outside of just fire, we're also the the general sort of benefit of fiber cement really also comes down to we don't warp, we don't cup, we don't rot, and bugs don't like to eat the product. So at the end of the day, you're you're dealing with a, a product that looks like wood, but really has very minimal of those attributes that wood had, which yeah. is it it burns, it cups, it warps, it twists, and and the bugs can go after and and, and corrode it. So so I think that underlying substrate really provides sort of a really nice aesthetic. But more than anything, it's an insurance policy, gotcha. right? That you're not going to have to worry about doing a lot of repair replacements over time mm -hmm. because the insects, the fire, the bugs can't get to it. Yeah. So. Okay. I wanted to tap in a little bit to your on the job site knowledge or experience from the standpoint. It seems to me that using a product like this would potentially speed up the project management or the, mm. the project mm. in general because you're potentially eliminating a significant amount of painting. Is that, have you found that to be true or is, ah, you know, you have to be careful and. Well, that, that's an interesting one because I do think you have to evaluate sort of the entire process. And, and when I think about the entire process of, let's say you're going to reside your home, right? There's a number of decisions you have to make from the design of the physical aesthetics. So the products, do you want lap? Do you want panel, board and batten? What sort of design option you want? That's mm -hmm. one piece. Mm -hmm. But color selection is another piece. And I don't know about you, but I struggle with, you know, again, going and trying to pick the right color that I know is going to look just right. And so we tend to see sometimes people choosing the exact same color. I had a blue house and now I want another blue house because I know that it looks okay and I don't have to worry. So there's time that goes into deciding on the products, but there's also time that goes into deciding on the color. And so I think on that front end, we're trying to minimize those two pieces, right, by offering products that are already pre-finished. And so you have a, a, a limited option where you can say, oh, these are the colors that I want to choose from. From an installation standpoint, the biggest hurdle in finishing a, let's say, a, a reside of a home would be the paint, which comes at the end. Yeah. And, you know, the, the climate in Seattle, although we feel like it's somewhat moderate, it's got a lot of challenges with paint. There's like 158 days where uh, basically it rains in the Pacific Northwest in some way, shape, or form. The average humidity in the morning is like 85%. I mean, we feel that through the winter and, mm. and, and, and even when it's warm in the summer, there's a lot of humidity in the air. And so the problem is if you look at what's required to get good paint adhesion, it's a dry board at optimal temperatures, there's only a window of about three months in the Pacific Northwest <laughs> where you can actually paint and achieve the goal of what the paint manufacturer is trying or, or wants you to achieve to maximize your performance. And so what I tend to see is, I tend to see if people are choosing a primed option, they choose their product, they choose their color, they install, and then there's weeks and weeks and weeks of waiting. Mm -hmm. Waiting for the right temperature, waiting for the, white, the right weather, waiting to make sure it's not too windy, to be able to paint on that day where they can make sure they're optimizing their finish. So I do think that if you take all of the factors in from design through selection, through implementation, you're minimizing on the back end any concerns with weather or temperature. You're able to continuously move day to day. Now, it's not going to be super fun when it's pouring down rain, mm. but you could be putting the product on the wall that day. Right. Whereas if you're putting up a prime solution, you're going to be waiting for paint. So there's no question. I think 
if you were to replicate over and over again and you were to, you know, to, to look at the weather patterns, there's no question it does make more sense and it can be a much faster solution from design all the way through implementation, yeah. but you got to factor in all of the pieces. So. Yeah. Well, I'm glad you brought that up because I, now that I think back on it, that's really what kept driving me to stay on this topic and finally get to this point and talk about it. How getting a quality paint job in this region is seems like it's next to impossible. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is. It's very challenging. And hats off to the painters out there. I mean, oh. it, it's it's not an easy job. If you're inside, it's great, your weather yeah. control. But outside, you're dealing with a lot of obstacles. Yeah. And it is a challenge. And I think yeah. that's where, again, we've seen consumers selecting this product because A, it gives them a choice of a color or, or design that they like. But B, it also makes that process more sinuous, simpler, faster, yeah. and at the end of the day, easier to finish because they're not dependent on oh, well, I want to do this in November. Now I have to wait until March or April maybe to have those optimal days to go ahead and paint. Yeah. Well, if you're, if you're in it as a business, it's all about cash flow too. You know, oh, all of a sudden you wrap up and move on, yes. get your money and you're on to the next project. You don't have these things hanging out there and That's there's right. a holdback of X. So. That's right. Uh, final thing I wanted to touch on, wrap up this segment with was, I'm assuming there's some sort of a warranty benefit to going color plus as opposed to primed and field yeah. applied paint. So we would have, um, all of our products would have a standard warranty on them. So the substrate itself has a warranty, okay. but we also warrant the, the physical coating, right? So we have a, a coating warranty. And that's against you know chipping, cracking, peeling, all of that stuff that we talked about sort, mm -hmm. of, sort of earlier, the idea that you're not gonna have to worry about sort of a heavy lift to, uh, to touch up or refinish. I, I think ultimately though, what the consumer's really getting at the end of the day is they're getting a lower maintenance solution that they don't have to worry about. In general, I would say, depending on the conditions of the weather, the conditions of the of the site, the historic weather patterns, the the color you choose, dark colors and light colors, all of those have bearings. But generally speaking, you have to repaint about every seven to 10 years. And so if you have to repaint that becomes sort of a maintenance item that has to be on your to-do list. And whether you're doing it yourself or you're subcontracting or, or hiring somebody to come out and paint, uh, it becomes an obstacle to maintain your home. And so I think ultimately what they're choosing is, is a substrate that's durable. They get a warranty, a 15 year finish warranty on top of that, on just the warranty of the, of the finish. But really what they're looking for is they're trying to ensure long-term, low maintenance and defer as long as they possibly can any yeah. type of yeah. repaint on the exterior. Okay. So. Great information. I appreciate you sharing all that. Absolutely. Thanks. Thank you.